was the police doing? I'm not there in the chair. As an Indian, as an Indian, to uphold truth and justice. To uphold truth and justice. Let's turn to India now, to the brutal rape and murder case in Kolkata. Yesterday we told you about the investigation, we also told you about the politics and how no one is asking the right questions. Well, today we can say someone is. And that someone is the Supreme Court of India. The Chief Justice has taken so moto cognizance of this case. The first hearing was held today and the court had questions for everyone, from the former principal of the college to the state government and the state police. That we are deeply concerned of the fact that the name of uh, the deceased who was assaulted and murdered, the name has been published all over the media. Photographs have been yes. published all over the media. What was the principal doing? Why did he not, one, why was this kind of inaction on the part first an attempt to pass this off as a suicide not instead correct. of a murder? I'm sorry, Mother, that's it's not correct. Not recording, not registering an FIR till late in the evening. Yes, the body itself is handed over to the parents sometime in the evening for cremation. A group of persons, a mob assembles at the hospital. The hospital is invaded and the critical facilities are damaged in the morning or whenever the, the mob enters. What was the police doing? A lot of questions were for the West Bengal government and understandably so. First, such a brutal crime happened inside a medical college. Then a mob vandalized the crime scene. So it looks like the top court has run out of patience here. They're asking central agencies to secure the RG Carr Medical College. Security agencies like the CISF and the CRPF, they have been asked to do this. Now, beyond the directives, three things stand out. Number one, the Chief Justice of India said that this is not just about the murder, it's about the safety of doctors across the country. Number two, he called it an issue of national importance, and we agree. When you have 1.4 billion people, health is a strategic concern. And finally, point number three, women must be assured safety at the workplace. If not, we are denying them equality. Now, these are very important points raised by the Chief Justice of India. The question is, who is going to do all of this and how? Well, the court has set up a national task force. It has nine doctors from across India, some from AIMS, some from government medical colleges, and one from the Indian Navy. This task force has been given a specific job. Draw up rules to ensure safety and security of medical professionals inside hospitals. Whether it's doctors or nurses or even medical students on duty, they must all be safe. Now, this task force will draw up the required rules. They must submit an interim report within three weeks and a final report within two months. Similar orders have been given to the CBI and the Kolkata police. They are the ones investigating the case. Both must submit a status report by Thursday. And that's not all. The court is seeking some information from state and central governments too, specifically on eight points. How many security professionals do hospitals have? Is there baggage screening at the entry? How many resting rooms are there? What facilities do these rooms have? Are all areas in a hospital under CCTV coverage? Is there training to handle grieving patients? Are there police outposts at hospitals? And is there a posh committee in place? That's a committee to handle sexual harassment cases, a posh committee. Now, these are the questions that India's top court asked today. The central government has to compile this data and hand it over within a month. That is the gist of what happened in court today. Questions for authorities, task force for solutions, and homework for governments. Now, this hearing is not a silver bullet. We have to remember that. It won't change things overnight. But it's a very important start because the conversation was veering away from the root problem, the problem of safety. Instead, it was becoming a political spectacle. You had street demonstrations, nonsensical deadlines for death sentences and demands for resignation. But the top court of India has done us a favor. It has put the focus back where it should be. What's more, it has given us a roadmap, suggestions on how to make things better. Now, it's all up to the governments, both the state and the central government. They don't have to wait for the task force to file a report. They can take actions voluntarily. In fact, the health ministry has written to all central institutions. They have suggested 12 security measures, like more CCTV cameras, a control room to respond to emergencies, and duty rooms for medics on the job. Yes, such suggestions have come after the incident, but still it's a welcome move.
I guess the bottom line is quite simple here. We need a systemic overhaul. We need to rethink state-run hospitals and medical colleges, whether it's their funding or their security arrangements or their infrastructure. Minor tweaks won't help. You need to think big now. And in the short term, you must talk to the protesting doctors as well, whether it's the West Bengal government or the central government. These doctors have a list of demands. Maybe not all of them are achievable or can be met, but a conversation is necessary. In West Bengal, we've seen the opposite. Some Trinamool Congress leaders have been targeting the doctors. One said that female medics are going around with their boyfriends. Another is threatening to break the hands of protesting doctors, and the top court had a warning for them too. The Chief Justice told West Bengal to not unleash the state's power on protesters. So the court is doing its job. It's now time for governments to do theirs. Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree a News 18 network initiative.